Your greetings, brother. Sorry. RJ Mahdi, family, I'm in Senegal uh, for the first time in like 15 years. From, and um, this is where I started at 17 years ago. Uh, then coming and learning about the roots and culture. And now 17 years later, we're actually doing more tours, uh, wonderful Senegal and the Gambia. So, brother, how are you? How you been? All right, man. Welcome back. I well, appreciate it, man. And uh, you know, you're a good inspiration, man. You know, just knowing that you, you know, from Atlanta, Georgia, and you just moved to Senegal. And just you know, appreciate you even reaching out uh, a while back when we talk. For sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, hey, man. We, you know, paths intersect, man. This is, uh, you know, this is what all this collective development is about, man. You know, we cross paths and we build. Man. Good to see y'all here, man. Y'all, uh, y'all looking happy. Y'all looking like y'all been. You know, opened opened up to this you know African environment. I don't know once you land on the ground, that energy is strong. So yeah, we only been here for thirty six hours, and some people think we've been here for a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Welcome to Senegambia. Uh, you guys uh, definitely gonna see a lot here that may you know surprise you, may uh, um, be contrary to what you've heard or seen before embarking on this journey. But, uh, you know, essentially, this is what it's all about. You know, it's, these things can't be discovered just from a distance. You know, you gotta actually approach, you have to actually engage, you have to actually open up your mind, you have to actually, you know, be willing to learn, build. You know, this is why we, we sit ourselves here, you know, my family, my wife, my kids and I, because, you know, if it's not for people being here on the ground, you know, it'd be difficult for these types of, you know, journeys to happen. So, you know, some of us got to just kind of put ourselves in position to be that bridge. That's what you're Absolutely. That's what doing. And for the, for the uh, people um, that's watching on your channel, my name is Bomani Tayemba, and our company is called Africa for the Africans, and we specialize in tours and investment. Uh, that's from tours uh, going to different countries, and I've been traveling to 10 countries from 2004 to now. Um, and we have four countries on our current rotation uh, to you know, do roots and culture tour, uh, which is uh, Tanzania, Senegal, the Gambia, and then the flagship operation, Ghana, where we're also doing land development and land management and you know, real estate uh, investment. So, you know, over the years, you kind of just put your work in to step your game up. But uh, I'm family, I'm one of them people that's in the States, dedicated to building that permanent bridge. You know, like, you know, sometimes some people move over, but um, I want to put more work into it while I'm raising my, my, my child. We just kind of keep on building and then using the resources from, you know, what we you know, have in America to connect our people better. Uh, so it has been a beautiful journey and, you know, I literally got into this world of uh, black consciousness from uh, co uh, one of my good co-workers is literally sharing me some of these wonderful conscious books and DVDs and then just it built my energy to come to Africa. So. It's, uh, you know, people ask you how you do these things, you tell them over the period of time, you keep putting the work in. And then if, the most important thing, you know, I was talking about this earlier is, if you're a black person, you got to literally understand the fact that we have so much other black cultures and our own people from all over the world. And if you're going to do things with us as a people, you have to reach out to the rest of the people around the world and get to know them because we're unique black people everywhere. Like I tell people, I was born in Jamaica and grew up in America where just thankful to have that opportunity because America puts you in that prime market. You know, we have people from everywhere on the planet that live in America, as far as black people. Uh, so it makes it an ideal market to build a good relationship with. And you know, you know, like the, the great words say, you build it, they will come. And that's been my life, man. And I'm, I, I'm still shocked that everything has just worked out good. Like I tell people I never had a bad hour or minute in Africa. Uh, so, you know, family, we're, we're living an example of, of the wonderful things you can do. And you, you took it up another notch by living here, building an investment group, and things like that. So, we, you know, we're here to, to share with you, family, that you know, we, we as a people are connecting together and trying to show more of that, that, that unity and be an inspiration for folks. So, I mean, I'm always looking to connect with you because I feel like you and I have a lot we can, together we can share with people and because we're working on the same common goal. Like you, you use Africa for Africans, I'll use Africa for the Africans. And it's the same thing too. We're trying to let people know that like, this is the kind of thing to be. Yeah, so it is. So it's that yeah. org and dot com. Uh, no, that's the name of it. Just a, it is, that's well, a we, we, we share we share a common concept, and so uh, the concept that he's talking about is Africa. In uh, his, his is Africa for the Africans, which I got and from uh, Marcus Garvey and Martin Delaney uh, right. back in the uh, 
18 something. Right, right. 1820s. Right. There you go, brother. That's 1920s. Good um, right. Martin Luther, yeah, Martin Luther, Martin Luther, people have to like literally go back to that's what was literally a visionary of yeah. that, that mindset of us looking to connect to Africa. It's a mindset. Yeah. And so there is another uh, spiritual uh, uh, teacher here in Senegal, a big spiritual teacher named uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Yas, uh, who one of his. Uh, his brother here is actually one of his uh, his mukadams, his, the, the teachers that teach his uh, his doctrine, and so that uh, big chef actually had a very famous book named Africa is for the Africans, uh, and so again that intersection of you know what we're doing. So we, you know he just uh, quoted somebody from Jamaica in the early eight, 1900s who used that phrase, mm -hmm. and we follow a teacher here in Senegal who was born in 1901. And, 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 and lived in the same time frame, but also used that phrase and, and wrote a book which is coined in that phrase. So uh, that just shows you that this is not something that Bomani or RJ came up with. This is not something that we just started. This is not a new thing. This is an inherited mission from the teachers that came from before us. There you go. So we're, we're just carrying on something that was given to us by the people who uh, upheld themselves to a higher standard, mm -hmm. right? So we're not doing anything that our teachers weren't willing to do or didn't do themselves. You know? So when you look at what Garvey did, he put his own life and his own family, his own security on the line for it. When you look at what Sheikh Ibrahim, our teacher here, did, he did the same thing. He built entire communities. Uh, you know, he built followings around the world and what in structures of collective development. So we learn from those. We take those into our our daily lives, and that's what drives us forward. You know? Can you tell me, uh, both of you, in regards to the investment portion, how can we, um, coming from the diaspora, learn a little bit more about what you do as far as investment as well as you? Yeah, and that's perfect because we both do tours and investment, which is, is the, the pinnacle of tours, literally connecting you with the interests of the country and then investment, giving you a more secure place to want to live and do business in the country. Yeah, but my brother, go ahead and then share. Yeah, so um, you know, investments is uh, is a faction of what we do. Um, you know, the, the the main the main bulk of what we do is just allowing the diaspora to engage, and so that can be for so many different purposes. Everybody comes home for a different reason. You got folks who come home for the spiritual, folks who come for the detox, for the you know um, the cultural, the traditional, and then you have folks who come for the economic. And obviously the economics is what drives lifestyle. So if we're talking about living here or actually building here, it's gonna require economics and development. And so um, with our investment uh, group, what we do is we focus on that. Whatever uh, it takes for our people to be able to thrive here, or whatever um, skills you have, whatever resources, whatever experience, work experience, uh, uh, professional experience, putting it to use in a way that's also developing the continent um, and that's what Pan-Africanism is. It doesn't even have to be you relocating to the continent, but you putting your efforts and your resources into the continent in your everyday life and operations. So you can still live anywhere in the world, but own operations on the continent, own real estate on the continent, own investment properties and, and businesses that are still feeding you and taking care of you wherever else in the world you are. Uh, and so that's true Pan-African you know, investment and development. That's what we focus on. Absolutely, and what I was telling um, my brother earlier, uh, you know, we, have, we literally have the same concept and things we talk about. Because when I talk, when I think about investment, I'm literally looking at corporate economics. Uh, you know, one, my favorite author, um, still to this day, is uh, Dr. Amos Wilson. He wrote that famous book, Blueprint for Black Power, uh, based on economics. So when you're looking at the things that we want to do in America and that we try to do, you know, you're very limited. But then if you open your mind up to Africa. You know, like one of the things we focus on uh, in Ghana is getting, trying to learn the, the culture of business, how to get land, how to work things out, how to understand the, the loopholes and issues in the system, and then just really just going out there and doing it. So what we're also talking about is a literally practical way of getting things done. Uh, you know, you know you need land, you know you need connections, and that's what I like about Ghana. We have a good momentum there, but you know, as you can see me in Senegal, we're not, just not just stopping there, because we do need to have a good seven to ten countries where where when people really realize that it's time to just escape America, they have those things in place. So if you need to get citizenship, residency, which is another thing I was gonna ask you about later on, um, if you need to get uh, certain connections to where 
when you get to a country, you're not just spinning your wheels. So you guys join us on the journey, which is good because you notice uh, none of us speak French or Wolof. So you come here, you're going to get you know, lost in, in, in things. So having those of us that have built that connection and making sure that you know, our people are taken care of, it really just helped things go. And, and so I was explaining to you know, a, a friend of mine uh, about a few days ago and let him know that no, I'm not moving to Africa to separate myself from my brothers and sisters. But I was like, it's important to build energy with like-minded people that where you live at and say, hey, you know what, let's make a group move to Africa so we can put our money together, get land. Uh, we can look out for each other, not like we just run, we, we're scared of running from the local folks. But uh, when, when you look at Africa, you have to look at everything is based on ethnic groups. So you can call it tribes, you can call it small nations. But my elder, you know, one of my greatest inspiration also, Sister Imacus, so my one yeah. Africa, you know, the famous New Yorker who moved to Ghana. She literally explained that to me when I first got to Ghana in the early 2006, 2007. And she was like, you get better success if, you know, and she was saying something, people may not like that sound, but it's like, she was like, we as a people are from the tribe that we live at, which you know, you can call it the black folks who live in America, but it's kind of like a tribal group. So if you organize yourself properly and you connect with other people in the country, you know, you can actually, you know, it's, it's like it gives you leverage to where now you're coming to the table with another ethnic group, another group of people, and we can say, you know what, we're both nations and we can, we're coming together for the benefit of the future. Mm -hmm. But somehow people may look at it different uh, when we talk about building communities. They may say, if you guys move in Africa to, to build this black American city and things like that. And I'm not sure if you get that same thing, but like I tell people, we're on like the same path of things like that. But, you see, but more so you see the, the importance of doing it because Sometimes I have people that go to a certain country, and I'm not, not gonna lie, family, it has break my heart. I've had good friends who have done well for themselves, went to Africa, and because they just wanted to dissociate with us, like, I'm not messing with you black folks in America. I'm gonna go to Africa, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get with the people. And I was like, yo, we're both your people, I'm your people, we're your people, and our African family on the continent is your people too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't just like run away from any of us. Just like where we're living at, we have 65 acres, but then I have so much other Ghanaians that's building development communities and things like that. And I've spoken to a few of them. I was like, you know, I was like, this gives us a chance to work together. Because what I was explaining to them, well, I come from Jamaica, I lived in Kingston, but when I was able to grow up in America and we finally had a little money, you know, we went back to Jamaica and enjoyed a life that we just saw other people enjoying. Going to Montego Bay, Negril, Ocherias, three of my favorite places in the world. And all three of those places have incredible beach cities, but unfortunately, some of the real estate that's in these wonderful cities, you know, like my sister say, it's, it's, it's Spanish, it's Chinese, it's Indian and all that stuff. And a very small percentage of black Jamaicans that have any ownership. So now I was, I was telling some of my neighbors that live in, you know, outside of Winneba in Ghana, where we are, that when we put this energy together, we can transform the beach. I was explaining to them, you know, that's like, that's why when I was driving earlier and I saw that, that strip uh, yes. right there in that car where they people were working out, out playing soccer, and it reminded me of Brazil. Those are the things that you can literally put together and then you can add your resorts, you can, you know, one of the favorite things I like to have beach parties, you know? mm -hmm. And you can just make it to where you have the price so low for the average local person or average brother or sister to where you have your own brothers and sisters coming to enjoy a vacation because everywhere I've ever been, as far as some of the wonderful places, what I see is a lot of everyone else, you know? Uh, like I was in Panama uh, City uh, Beach, uh, which is uh, just, you know, in Northern Florida, Northwest Florida. And <laughs> it's like so much is owned by so much other people. Then you go to Daytona Beach, you go to Myrtle Beach, you go to Miami Beach, you go to Fort Lauderdale Beach, and so on, West Palm Beach, and all these other wonderful places. <laughs> Yeah, and, well, and there, it's you know about Broward. There you go, and it's just resources that we you know that other people just built and then say hey, you know just you just come and we're gonna get your money. But it's you know we can uniquely build something for us in that area. That's why when we was looking for land, we want to get something about two miles away from a you know from a beach, and then also get access to a freshwater lake, which may be about a few miles away, and and then ultimately. That beach is nice and clean and we can transform it. And it's trying to get us more into black economic investment. So that's what I've learned uh, in, in Africa as far as just group economics. And like I mentioned to you, family, going back to Amos Wilson, Blueprint for Black Power, that was the most relevant book I've ever read because he based everything on the aspect of the importance of power. And uh, I was talking to one of my other brothers uh, earlier today and we were talking about the same thing. We were talking about what white people are doing. They came from, um, I heard the tour guide explain this, that you know, we call, we use the word poor white trash. Before 
before slavery and colonization, you have to just think about Europe. France is in trouble, and they get so they steal so much money from their West African, uh, you know, their their, their their West African former colonies or colonies or whatever you want to look at it. And they have they have countries in the Caribbean they have conquered, and they're getting all of these resources there, they're, and then still they're in trouble. So imagine when they didn't have access to all of the resources that they stole from us and things like that, and have access to the, the countries that they have now. Uh, what were they living like? You know, probably just poor white trash. Yeah. So they, they looked at everything as power, like you know, what? we're yeah, tired of starving, we're tired of this. Let's go out there to the known, the, 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 whatever out there, and we're gonna figure something out. And you know, and, and you're telling everyone. You know, it's easy for us to take these things emotional and things like that, but you know, we deal in a world of modern day warfare or military science. And if you don't gear yourself up to put your resources together or figure out a way how you're gonna make it, and that's why I use black corporate economics. And when I tell people that when we do everything, it's just us. Like, I tell people, look at my website, look at everything, you will not see a white face in there. Maybe somebody walking by by accident, and we didn't like remove them from the photo, but you're, you're focusing on yourself because you're trying to build power. And it's hard to build power when you're integrating with so much other entities that don't have your best interest. So yeah, I just wanted to share that, that those are the things that we're building because sometimes people are confused about what we're really out here doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I had somebody that was you know, insulting us on YouTube um, uh, because we're trying to build these beautiful black communities and saying that, you know, and I was like, you know, whatever you want to, if you want to talk to me about it, you can call me and we'll, you know, we'll explain it oh, to you. you but you get insulted on YouTube too? Oh, not really, because people say I'll be laying low. I was like, I'll be, I use my tourist video. Yeah, we had this, uh, this, this clown Negro, unapologetic Negro PM. Yeah, he yeah, this, insults everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, 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 and I think so, and, and it's like, yo, you know, and you have this, you know, some people just don't get it, mm. but it's like power is what's important. Mm. You know, like everyone else, like well, I tell people about the Chinese, the Indians, they've been in the gates of Africa because, you know, even when the British brought them, some of them over to build, like, you know, from East Africa to Southern Africa, those railroads or those projects from uh, uh, the UK or, uh, or Britain, they literally had so much territories and they wanted to just connect their, their, their situation from, you know, like they talk about Cape to Cairo and, and things like that. And they looked at everything as power. Uh, so, you know, you're telling people, that's what I get from Garvey. And when we talk about Africa for the Africans, you know, because you're looking at India for the Indians, Chinese for the, the Chinaman, and now you have the European Union uh, that's, that's established themselves uh, after they almost wiped each other out in World War II. Like, if that thing would have lasted for another five years, it would have been like, ooh, life would have been sweet, because it's less, but, but nevertheless, it, you know, they doubled up, so you're telling us that we have to do the same thing. And let me not take all the time to talk. I'm sure my brother has some more things to share. <laughs> I see that in Senegal, from the last time I was here, they've been building up so many um, construction. Can you tell us or share a little more to the people how Senegal has just changed within the last two years as far as... Um... Yeah, so um, I mean, that's a great question. Because the last 24 months here in Senegal have probably been the fastest rate of development I've seen anywhere in my life. Um, let me just give you some perspective. In the, in the last two years, that airport you guys landed at was just built. Yeah, that right. highway that came from that airport was just built. That toll road. The two stadiums you passed on the way from that airport have been built in the last two years. Even the new city. Uh, that we, entire we'll city that surrounds it, Jamiadio, was just built in the last two years. Wow. Um, yeah, the, the past two years for Senegal, the fast rail train was just built. It's not even open yet. It's supposed to open here. Yeah, soon. I heard about the railroad. Yeah, um, you know, in the last two years, um, this country has gone through expansion mainly because you know Dakar is the only major city. So you got you know some six plus million people in Dakar, and you're looking at a country that needs to expand, you know, so that it can you know uh, depopulate the major cities, open up into suburbs, create that urban sprawl. Uh, and so uh, the president and his administration have uh, really great uh, development rollouts. Uh, you know the Youth Olympics. We're supposed to be here next year, uh, the first Olympic Games to be held on the continent. Mm -hmm. And um, they've been postponed because of COVID, uh, so I think it's 2024 now instead of 2022. Um, but uh, essentially in that same time frame, the, the president has an, uh, an objective to build at least 100,000 homes in the country you know, in, the, in, in, in the next couple of years before the end of his presidency. 
So, you know, this opens up a lot of opportunity for development and not just residentially, but commercially. So 100,000 families are going to need places to work, eat, live, you know, yeah. uh, educate, et cetera. So um, sure. a lot of room for development and infrastructure. Uh, our company here is an SA corporation, which allows us to manage major um, government contracts, like building bridges, tunnels, roads, um, power grids, telecommunications operations, these kind of major, uh, even mining, uh, things like that. And so that's really where you know development should be focused right now, is just getting ahead of what's already planned, which is urban sprawl and development. So, yeah. Awesome. Diego, isn't that incredible? Because uh, when you look at where we are in the U.S., um, even where I live at, nothing has been really built in the last 20 years because it's, it's developed. So you know right. that limits you for to, you know do investment and things like that. So every country I've ever been in Africa, that was the, always the goal. And even when I was in Tanzania last. Remember my brother? They were literally talking about building that new city uh, in, in the middle of the country. And the, the same thing is you know even where we are in Ghana and other countries. Do you have that opportunity to expand? Because that's one of the things that, you know, you're, when you look at the African content, the countries, you know, you hear about Nigeria, you hear about Lagos, but what did uh, they do in uh, Nigeria? They built Abuja from, and, and so on. So uh, that is, that's a future family. It's a whole lot of development, but you're also letting people know that you, we, us, can be a part of that development. Whatever is going on in America, you're gonna get left out of it consistently and purpose uh, because it's what it is. So for the people who want to expand their mindset, it has to be Africa. It's like we got to get away from them. I understand that we've been through so much in America or other parts of the diaspora, but we got to think about the mainland. You know, India main focus is to make sure India is strong. China make sure that China is strong, and then they send their folks out to conquer everything else. Uh, and they're very competitive in business. So you tell them, every one of us, we have to do the same too, thing too. We have to get into the level of investing in ourselves, working together and connecting and making a future, a better future for our children. That way when our children is growing up and they're looking for a job, they don't have to compete with, because mm -hmm. uh, let's be realistic about America. By the time they let in, and, and, it's, and I don't have anything against all these other people I'm saying, is because our focus is always Africa for the Africans. But, Look at the situation dealing with Mexico. Mexico is a big country, you know, and uh, one of my brothers was telling me, and I, I know several people who left, left Mexicali or, Mex uh, or, or California, and they complained about the same thing too, and then they went to another state, and they was like, man, they've been warning people that they're coming, and that's what you're gonna have to deal with, and you're not gonna be able to compete with it, especially when we talk about, you know, there's no place like South Mexico, but what I mean by that, all of the, the Spanish-speaking countries below Mexico, People are hitting the borders and people are going to work their way up and they're going to be coming to take your position and your opportunity. Uh, so either gear up for, you know, for a fight of your life, uh, but then when, you're, you're, when we as a people don't own certain economic situations like corporations and so on and so on, then, then your child is out there for a position and you know, anyone could just pass them up and you know, I have my own stories to, to tell about those things. Uh, cause, you know, but it's like you create the future in Africa so when your children want opportunities, and you know we're just fixing our own problems and we can do that little by little um, especially with the resources that we have access to in America like you know like I was telling like we were talking about earlier about the salaries and the kind of economic resources that we have in America that if we use it properly we can build great black economics and literally put ourselves in a situation so while my brother and us talking about the future of Africa we telling people don't miss out and that's why I appreciate everyone in my uh, in our investment group called Black Star Pan-African Community um, and then we just got together, put our money together, and started acquiring land, and we got goals to do group projects. And some people may say, yo, that land is a lot of money. I was like, I know, but when you put your money together, other people's money, it makes a big difference. So that's what we, you know, we're looking at. We're looking at getting everyone cleared and prepared for the future of Africa, and let people understand also that, you know, if you don't see what we see and things like that, we don't have no beef with you, because we're literally gonna have to focus on what we are focusing on. So while the sideline haters are running their mountain, things like that, you know, we're looking for the people who are about that life, about that business. And, you know, I uh, grew up in an energy where I met a lot of black people talking about black power, black consciousness. And then when it's time to do the work, it's like... <laughs> you know, so it, it's gone. So, you know, we got to build a momentum with those of us who are doing certain things. Just like RJ Mahdi lives here in Senegal. I know so much people that live in so much other parts of Africa. And when I was in Tanzania, the same thing too. 
we were, we were just connected with our folks and we we're talking, we were having the same conversation about us just doing it. That. And that, that's what I feel it, it just takes. It takes us just Come having together. dialogue. A lot of times, honestly, we don't even communicate with each other. Because you're thinking, uh, you're thinking like, oh, you look at me and like, yeah, you know, maybe I won't, maybe I don't say anything to, to to him because he's gonna come and take, steal my car or break into my house and things like that. Just complete negative energy. But if you build an energy with like-minded people, and and I think also like we talk about, if you build it, they'll come. So you put the work in, and the support will come. Like I, I, I was telling people that I appreciate the American market, the Black American market, because we have access to so much people that we can do things with. And uh, one thing I realized is, you know, even when I started my first business, my IT business, man, I got so much love from folks. Folks, you know, just trust me to come to their house and work on their computer system and didn't have to show them a bunch of certification and paperwork. It's, you know, the, the trust was there. Uh, and some of these are relationships and some of these are referrals. Mm -hmm. But these are things we just literally gotta, gotta look trust at. Trust each other. Just put the work in and build the trust. That's why I tell anyone, if you wanna do any kind of business or investment with me, you don't even have to even call me or talk with me. You can look at all of the stuff that we have out. And then when you're definitely ready to talk to me, if you wanna talk for two, three hours or whatever it is, or every week or so on, I make myself available. And I realize when you put the work in, you know, the things work out. Uh, so. I think we just have to change up our game plan because you know we'll say every time we try to do this in in, a, in America this happened that happened and we see the consistency of it. As a matter of fact, my brother Bynus was the one that told me told me about uh, the move situation in Philadelphia. It was a, it was a, it was a black uh, economic group, and if they were literally was working it out to where they was they can get access to land and do things in Africa, that group would have been so incredible. So. You know, Africa is a solution, family. You know, uh, John Africa and them out of, out of prison now. They're coming back. Oh, really? Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. you know? And then we got to put the work in to welcome our brothers and sisters that mm -hmm. was locked up for just... 30 years. You know, oh, yeah, the whole... 80, yes, like uh, even, the, even the, during the civil rights movement, all of our people that was locked up and, you know, people giving other people get out of jail free card and it's like, you know, where's, you know, where's the people that's going to get our, our folks out that was out there just standing up for themselves. So when they're ready to, you know, so when they're ready to make a move, we got to be prepared for them in Africa. So all of the things that we're building is for our brothers and sisters who, who get the picture. And then for those who don't understand, you know, the slow runners and non-believers, you know, yeah, they'll, still they'll figure you. it out in due time. We still love you. Yeah, we still love you because we, we know after a while you're going to get it, especially when you see all the things that we build. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was telling people, I have a long list of other people on standby. And what they do is monitor and watch what we do. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, I was like, it's cool. You know, we're going to build a little bit more, but you know, as we build, the price is going to go up. So you can either get it now and put the work in with us, or you can, you know. So, you know, that's, uh, that's how I look at it. And, um, and that's definitely why I'm talking to my brother and, and more people out there to where we can literally just connect together. Like one of our good brothers, that our mutual friend we have in, in common, uh, Dinah Samir. Uh, this, I've always just appreciated him ever since I met him. Met about, I don't know, I'm trying to remember. It was over 10 years ago when we was at a business conference in Atlanta, both of us were speakers talking about Africa. And one of the things I always say, I was like, brother, it's wonderful what you do. And I was like, you know, I was like, to survive in this business, you gotta get, to survive in this world, you gotta get into business. And I'm telling you, I was like, I never thought it would happen, but people are going to support you once yes. you just step out there and do certain things. Stay and so, focused. And then, you know, my brother was doing Nigeria, I was so happy. I was like, I was like, yo, anybody I have, I'm going to send them to you because mm -hmm. you're the only person I know brave enough to do this. So, and I was like, it's the right thing to do. And because I tell people I can't go to every country. For me, it's like, it's, it's based on many different things, what, where, you know, the countries I deal with. Uh, so if all of us are connected together and we all work in these angles, uh, you know, we're gonna make it happen, and so I think we, I feel like we have a bigger push now. Like especially like after the 2019 year return, where we saw more people, because I'm sure you saw a record amount of people in Senegal for a while, and then I talked to other people in in other countries, and they saw the same thing too. And then that COVID drama hit, and I tell people, the devil works hard, so you know you just gotta keep stepping your game up, yes. and don't let anything stop us. So uh, you know, family, you know, we're here. There's so many of us, you just reach out to us. You know, my brother is somebody accessible to communicate. I'm accessible. Uh, and a lot of us are accessible. We're gonna do this together. Yeah. That's right. And well, I'm just grateful to see the two brothers come together representing Africa. We got Senegal. If you wanna come, check RJ out. If you got Ghana, Tanzania, and um, South Africa. yeah, South Africa as well, as well as Senegal. Check out Bumani. I'm just grateful to see the brothers come together. Many blessings to you. Don't stop. Keep doing what you do and uh, continue to be amazing. Thank That's you for right. sharing. And we're both connected to Senegal. We're both connected to Senegal and the Gambia. 
So and like I've saw, I've seen, I've seen uh, some of your videos in, you know, in Senegal and the Gambia, and I'm like, yo, it's just what it is. But what I wanted you to share, man, because you know we, we talked about community. If you want to share some information about the community that you guys are working on and the investment group that you're working on in Senegal and the things that you're doing, that way you know whenever our people need certain things, you know, they can just come to us because you have built an incredible relationship. I've built an incredible relationship. So I always tell people. The ones of us that's doing it out there, reach out to us because, you know, versus us finding How can they reach you? What's the uh, website? Tell our us. website is madeinafricaproject.com. Say that again one more time for the people Made in the back. Madeinafricaproject.com. <laughs> um, I can give you guys some cards also. Okay. Um, but um, you can also reach me on social media at King RJ Mahdi. Okay. Right. And where can they meet you, sir? Yes, family. Uh, website is Africa for the Africans.org. Uh, you can catch me just all over online by typing in Bomani Tayemba, whether it's uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and we have just lots of pictures, videos, documentation of everything we talk about. So if you hear me talk about investment, we have pictures, videos, and details. That's you know, so that's, that's that covers all the spectrums of documentation. Okay, and this is his card. <laughs> I got you. All right. Hold the camera. Thank you. Thank you. So, so we'll share, lot, we'll, we'll, I, I, well, I also want you to share more about. Oh, absolutely, brother. That's the least I could do, man. You know, investment. Yeah, about the uh, the community building because I'm very interested in that. Okay, well. One of the things is, just, you know, I'm here for tourism in Senegal and the Gambia more so than anything else. But when right. we have people that are interested and want to live in new things, you know, you're like the person that I want to like connect them to. Right. And the same thing, like I mentioned, like Dinos is doing Sierra Leone and um, and he's still doing Nigeria. Well, working to get connected back to that. And that's me as a brother, man. I, it just, I just believe in sharing love. Just like you, you see us put the budget together and we just spread nothing but love. But anyway, uh, let's, let's hear about this community you, you guys are working on an investment. Uh, yeah, so we have a 1,200-acre um, uh, community here in Senegal. Uh, it's called Al Kabalon. And uh, it's about so 600 acres or so. Um, but uh, essentially, we've um, developed a 100-year development plan for the city. Uh, which includes uh, economics, education, agriculture, uh, transformation, tourism, um, and a ton of other industries just pretty much to, to make the city run. Um, it's slated for 10,000 homes as part of the President's 100,000 home program that we were just talking about. Uh, so we are partnered with the government on that project. Um, we have a lot of opportunities for folks to actually be able to own you know tracks of that project, so whole communities. Um, you know, essentially, you can think 600 acres is a lot of land to develop, and so, like Money is saying, it's a collective effort. Uh, so we have a lot of you know large scale investors who are coming in. Folks are building uh, amusement parks, uh, movie studios. Uh, we've got folks coming and building a university, uh, University of Akinola. So these things just will all be contributing to the development of that town. Um, so yeah, that's that's our main you know uh, focus right now is just filling all of the needs, you know, so that when people come and live there, everything they need to survive is in that city. Uh, and so you know, that's what we've committed ourselves to, and it's going really well. That's perfect. And also, you have a, an investment group. Um, if you want to share more about that club, yeah. So we, um, uh, our Made in Africa project is a member of what's called the Exodus Alliance. And the Exodus Alliance is six organizations uh, for the champion that champion repatriation. Um, so one of our partners in the Exodus Alliance is the UNIACL, so Marcus Garvey's organization. Um, also the uh, the State of the African Diaspora, the Eco Six, the Economic Communities of the Eco Six. Um, also uh, the Alkabalon Development Group, uh, as well as uh, Black Star Action Network International, and uh, Sankofa Repatriation Assistance Program, which is uh, Sister Ya and Ghana as well. And so our six organizations came together to develop uh, resources for mass repatriation. It's, it's one thing to be able to move a few dozen families, it's another thing to be able to move like the masses of people. And so when you're talking about an exodus, um, you know, we've got just since, okay, last year we hosted Africa Day 2020 uh, live stream, an eight hour live stream that was focused on the mass repatriation of the diaspora. 
since then we've got 4,000 applications of uh, African Americans wow. wanting to go ahead and move on. And so we've got to fill that need, right? There are people who want to come, uh, but they can't come to faulty situations, they can't come to, you know, uncomfortable environments, they can't come to, you know, no sustainability jobs, etc. They have to come to what they expect, which is an all-inclusive environment they can thrive in. And so our development team is made up of, uh, right now, about 40 professionals from around the world, all African descent, all black people, uh, skilled in environment, in law, in uh, finances, in manufacturing, agriculture, wellness, all these different fields, uh, who all came together to build this city. Because it's not something that one person can do. Uh, it requires a lot of varying skills. So that development group now just continues to grow. Uh, some of the main things we're focusing on is just uh, the manufacturing of wellness products, um, organic wellness for uh, for us, right? Especially in a time like now, everybody's concerned about health, um, but we're still forced to rely on Western supply of medicines. Um, Africa's got you know a, a lot of people, and no no, no pharmaceutical industries or, or wellness things coming out of the continent that we can use. And so that's one of our main projects in partnership with the African Kingdoms Federation and the State of the African Diaspora. Um, they have a program called the um, uh, Pan-African Pan -African, uh, Agricultural Commodities Exchange. And, uh, and so you know, those are the kind of projects that we're working on just for long-term sustainability. We're talking about being around for decades, providing the needs that our people have. And so, you know. That's cool. Yeah. It's a family. That's why you got to start young, cause it's a it's a lifetime of work. Mm -hmm. you know? It's a lot of work. And uh, you got, you know, and once you're in, you just got to stay in. Mm -hmm. right? But that is a uh, beautiful brother, and that's what we have to do. Like we, like we're talking about family, we're consolidating all of our resources together. And I'm, you know, we're gonna do this networking thing. What I like about that, cause you know, I do get your uh, mails also. Uh, the Made in um, Africa project. That was that's what drew interest to uh, me to connect with you. Just the idea of just. You know, one of the biggest issues that we have is a lot of times we're looking at all the things that we're wearing and things that we have and it's like, oh. it's not really made in Africa. Like you see, you know, one of the things I always remember seeing, made in China, it's like on almost everything, everything that you have in your home and everything. So, oh. made in Africa has to be that next level that we take it to. Uh, so that means that you're going to have to set up industries, all kind of industries to manufacture everything. And earlier we were having a conversation about all of us have access to the same resources now. So, you know, if we put our money together, we can buy all of our industrial machines uh, and then eventually start making them because we got to get to the point where we make those also. But industrial machines will give you access to making the things that you need to make. Because, you know, when we th think about China, it's like, well, they don't just have a button that they click and stuff doesn't happen. You know, they have factories and they have those things in place. And, then, and you, you can create salary to where you have a better quality of life for people who are working some of these hard working uh, jobs. Uh, so, you know, these are the things that we have to figure it out and we don't need anyone else to, to get involved in our business. It just needs to be us talking and figuring it out mm -hmm. and just realize that as long as we keep on involving other people into our affairs, it's going to keep on getting sabotaged. So that's what we have made our mind up that we're all going to work together and it's, a, it's, it's just more than one or two of us, it's a lot of us and we're all over the place. Beautiful. So, and that's one thing that we have to make sure that we do now. We can't just, you know, we just have to be more for global people because I was telling folks, I was like, we think these people just, you know, I understand cameras are watching you and know, all kind of things are watching you, but I was telling people, I was like, do you think these folks can just sit around and monitor all of us all day long? Uh, that's why all of these, that's, you know, that's why, you know, when you talk about uh, independence, you know, like the, the European countries, they couldn't just keep all their military and everybody just in all these countries, they're spreading themselves thin. Um, but you know they did come up with another way to figure it out. Like, hey, you can have independence. We just have to, and we're going to manage your affairs and manage everything. So, um, you know, you're dealing with people that's going to find ways to keep you oppressed until you literally say, hey, this is all about us, 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 and us figuring it out. So that's where I'm at. Um, and you know, a lot of things, you know, we're going to you hear myself repeat but because it's you know it's things. Sometimes people don't get certain things, so you have to break it down into a science. You know, because at the end of the day, whatever we build and do, it's going to benefit all of our children for generations. And then we talk about Africa as the youngest population. That is a beautiful thing, but what if we don't build the things that we need to build for that population? They become slaves for, you know, for the new people that's going to be running things, whether it's the Indian or the Chinese, or whether they partner up together, because 
they are the new global powers. They literally have everything in their, con their, their, their country now to, to be literally strong. So we just have to do the same thing as everybody else doing. I don't have much else to say beyond that family. Um, uh, let me know if you want to share anything else before we uh, close. Oh, man. Hey, look, you know. Africans for Africans. We are one. All right. That's it, family. So strong, uh, you know. So don't just talk about black power. Do the work of black power. That's right. Most end up a All right, so family, uh, the journey continues.